recently got into kayaking and while researching different options for stereos taking down the river, I've run across the, it seems very popular idea to turn an ice chest into a stereo. So this week I'm going to try my hand at doing just that. Since it is for a kayak, I'm going with as small of an ice chest as I think I can get away with. I have some marine rated speakers as well as amplifier and then also a control unit. This way I can control the tunes from outside of the ice chest without having to get inside of it. Then to power everything, I'm going with a 12 volt battery. And you can purchase these off the shelf, but mine actually came with the kayak because um, the kayak came with a fish finder. But since I don't fish, I'm gonna be using it for my stereo. The first thing I did was look around my shop for something circular about the same size as the speaker. Now don't cut the hole too big. If anything, you want to cut it slightly undersized to start off with. And the placement is important. Make sure that you plan out all of your other components so you can make sure that the back of the speaker won't interfere with anything else later being installed. It was my original plan to use two speakers, but I changed to one. And after hooking it up, one is plenty loud. I don't want to use conventional screws to attach the speaker because it's only going into styrofoam and I'm worried about it pulling off. So instead I want to use hardware that I can put a nut on the back side and just squeeze it into place. And I actually rated Cody's hardware bin and the only thing I found that would work is these machine screws with these collapsible wing nut things. I set the speaker in place then used a drill to transfer those mounting holes. Then put the screws in place and tightened them down. If you don't use wing nuts, and I recommend using a large washer and our standard nut. After cutting the hole for the receiver, I applied a bead of silicone to the back of the lip and then put it in its place. Since the surface is slightly contoured, you're gonna wanna make sure that this, that this seats all the way. And the unit does come with a mounting bracket, but mine had to be modified since it's on the edge of the ice chest. So I stuck it in my super jaws and used a right angle grinder to cut it down slightly. Next I moved on to mounting an amplifier. Now I mounted the amplifier a little bit high so that I would later have room for the battery to go underneath all the components. So the receiver doesn't have a large amplifier in it, but it does have an audio output, which I used to go over to the external amplifier and then from the amplifier over to the speaker. Then I'm powering all of this with a 7.2 amp hour battery, which works great for this light load. After do doing the preliminary hookup to make sure that everything was working, I started mounting everything permanently. I'm fixing the battery with two right angle brackets. However, they're not attached to the battery, just the cooler to keep it in place. Then completely optional, but something I wanted to do was add in a switch to completely interrupt ground and turn the components off inside of the cooler. That way it's not drawing any current whatsoever and slowly draining the battery. To mount the switch, I grabbed a random scrap of sheet metal and cut a hole just the size of the switch. Then I drilled two holes in it so that I can mount it to the mounting bracket on the receiver. With that in place, I wired one side to the battery and then the other side to the components I wanted to shut off. To prevent having to pull out the entire battery every single time I want to give it a charge, I'm going to be adding in a plug so that I can charge it just by plugging in a trickle charger from right here. It just so happens that Cody has a lot of motorcycles that came with trickle chargers, so I'm just going to be borrowing one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually stole a lot of things from Cody's side of the garage for this project. But if you don't have somebody's shop to raid, then know that you can purchase these units off of the shelf. And I'll leave you links to everything in the description. Now at this point, everything is wired together and done. So now it's just a matter of tidying it up. I'm gonna be using the help of these sticky back wire anchors. Now something to keep in mind, the receiver is not absolutely necessary. You could get away with just the amplifier and the speaker because the amplifier has an auxiliary input that you can hook your phone up to. However, having a receiver is nice because you can control it from the outside of the cooler, plus it has Bluetooth and radio options. Now, whenever I was putting all this together, it was my intention to keep everything as far into the corner as possible so that I would still have at least half of the cooler to retain the cooler function. Now to isolate the side, I grabbed some foam board to make a barrier or wall. I cut it to size and then sealed it in place using a liberal amount of silicone. 
And as you can see, I have room for a few bottles of water as well as some of those self-contained ice packs. It wouldn't be big enough for something like a camping trip, but for a float down the river, this is gonna be perfect for me. Now this might look like a mess, but I really have everything I need right here on top. I have the switch to kill power, the trickle charger to charge the battery, as well as the auxiliary input to hook up my phone. Now you could very well buy a Bluetooth speaker, but where is the fun in that? This was a blast of a project to try my hand at. And besides that, it combines two things that I need on the river, my cooler and my tunes. So I hope that you enjoyed this one and I will see you later.